Hello again. Today we're gonna to do a quick review and flight test of the Foxier Aura Pro 5-inch freestyle frame. But before we get into anything FPV related, let's get through a couple prerequisites. Yes, we are in a kitchen. No, there is absolutely no reason. And of course, that's a combat shovel on my wall. What else would I put there? All right, now we can actually get into it. <laughs> now we are gonna do things chronologically and start with the build, but if you get bored and just wanna see some flying, uh, feel free to go to this timestamp and you'll be there. For all the people who are sticking around for the build, let's get to it. For starters, Foxier sends everything in this little plastic box, and that's really nice for storing the parts later and keeping everything nice and organized, which I definitely thought was a nice touch. But once I started the build, I was actually a little confused at first because they don't include a diagram on how everything fits together in the box. I guess in retrospect, it's a little bit self-explanatory, but it is kind of nice to not have to guess what hardware goes into each part of the build so that you're not having to unscrew things later because you use the wrong screws. You can find it online I'll link it below for anyone who wants to build this frame. And once you see that, it's pretty self-explanatory and not a hard build at all. For this build, I'm using the SpeedyB F405 stack and the motors that I took off the Bardwell DIY after I fully broke it. Express LRS, of course, as the RX and then the Cadex Vista. All right, that's the build. Let's get out there and do some flying. <laughs> Some of the main takeaways once I started building was I love this TPU Vista housing that allows you to soft mount it and also just protects it a little more. Just recently on one of my other quads, I had the bind button break off and also a lot of gunk will get into the USB type C port. So that's a really nice feature. And I'd love to see some other manufacturers try their own take on the whole Vista soft mounting solution, especially Flyfish RC who makes my daily driver the uh, Volador. I'd love to see that in the future. This really opened my eyes to how nice that can be. Another thing worth mentioning is that the hardware is really quality. You can also tell the carbon is like top tier. On the more negative end of things, uh, some stuff I noticed is I do get a little bit of wiggle room uh, with the arms. So if I were to kind of pull on the arms a little, I do have a little bit of wiggle room there, which is not ideal. I think you can hear it. Can you hear that? I think. Which, of course, if you screw everything down super tight, that's not really gonna happen, but still. And then the other thing that freaks me out just a little is I have been getting used to the CNC'd aluminum camera plates as opposed to the carbon. Because something that happened when I was flying the Bardwell DIY, which has a very similar camera mounting solution to this one, is that when all the impact is distributed to one screw and one standoff, it's very likely, especially with the weight of a full-size GoPro, that screw can actually rip out or break off the carbon and then you're left with a top plate that is not even attached to the standoff. So I kind of do prefer the CNC mounts, which sort of spread that impact to two separate screws so that the top plate is a little less likely to break apart. But to be fair, the reason they did this is because they kept the weight super low on this thing. You can just tell. I mean, if I'm holding my Volador and this at the same time, this thing is hefty. These arms are a little thinner. They don't get thicker in the center. Every single piece of carbon on this thing is proportionally thinner than the Volador. 
And that definitely makes it a dream to tune and have a little bit longer flight time. One thing I think it's super comparable to is the Impulse RC Apex frame. It even has like an astoundingly similar bolt pattern on the bottom and it feels super similar to fly. The main difference though is that this is so much cheaper. <laughs> What is the price of this thing? I mean, dude, $60? For 60 bucks, you're getting so much. So yeah, if you prefer a lighter build, this is probably right up your alley. But if you're trying to fly and like bash this thing into concrete, wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It'll probably survive more than you'd expect. But for now, definitely gonna stick with the Volador because it's just, has such an unnecessary amount of durability. And then the last tiny negative, which plenty of people don't actually care about, is that there's no XT60 built into the top plate. Even though it has a hole in the top plate for the power lead to come out, which is nice, it still is gonna pull on the stack and I just get stressed out by that. Plus, then you're running the power lead like right next to the Vista, and that can start to interact with the coaxial cable that goes to your camera in weird ways. If you have to run the coaxial cable above the stack, which is preferred, if that power lead gets tugged on, it might pull on the coaxial cable and jack up the connection point with your Vista. So I tend to stay away from power leads that are just dangling around. If you don't crash that often and you're looking for something super light, um, especially if you're not flying with a GoPro, then yeah, you'll probably really like this frame. Most pilots are not gonna have an issue with this thing needing to survive the apocalypse. The issue with that though, is that the Volador can practically survive the apocalypse and it's only $5 more. So I'm gonna stick with the Volador for now, but a huge thank you for Foxier for sending this frame to me. And I'm definitely gonna be using this frame when my friends and family wanna learn how to fly. And they just want a light little cruiser slash medium intensity freestyle quad that they can learn on. All right, that's all for this video. Um, pretty quick one, but I hope it was informative and entertaining. Wow, my fridge is loud. <laughs> if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really like this video, um, please consider checking out my Patreon so I can afford to make more of these. Also, that giveaway that we're doing for my last video, uh, it ends today. So you have, I think, like five hours until I'm gonna draw. You still have time to get in on that. The details are on my Instagram, link below. And I'll also be announcing the winner on Instagram. So feel free to check that out and that's all I have to say. Um, I'll see you in the next one.